Retro Gaming Life. We're going to begin shortly and promptly at 7 p.m. One minute from now. Okay, and welcome to Cookie Tuesday's Retro Gaming Life. We are back revisiting 3D retro fighting games. So there's a little bit of a switch up in the schedule tonight. I wanted to do Mortal Kombat 4 Gold for the Dreamcast. However, my Dreamcast is acting up, and I think I may have to buy myself a new Dreamcast, which is okay. Um, those consoles are very inexpensive to buy. Um, nothing like buying a retro PS or something like that. In the meantime, we're still going to revisit Mortal Kombat 4, but we're going to do the vanilla version of MK4. And without further ado, we're going to get this started right now as I'm inserting the CD. If you're new to the channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the Strike First Gaming Twitch channel. Thank you so very much. And if you're watching this uh, re-upload um, re on my YouTube channel, then please find a moment to, um, to subscribe to my channel if you like this content. All right, here we go. You know, I remember when Mortal Kombat 4 first came out, I didn't know really what to think of it because um, the vanilla version, which is this version right here, did not have Katana in it. And just like Mortal Kombat 3, I was a bit conflicted because I was looking for Katana in vanilla Mortal Kombat 3, and of course they added her and Jade and Melina to Ultimate, and of course they were automatically in Trilogy. In Mortal Kombat 4, things changed up again, and I found out through an interview with Ed Boon that he later revealed that Melina, Katana, Cyrax, and Sector were supposed to be in Mortal Kombat 4, but because the PlayStation iteration did not have enough space, um, they could only they had limited amount of space on the you know information that they could put on the CD that they had to wait to expand that to the Dreamcast version. And so uh, once Mortal Kombat 4 Gold, the Dreamcast edition came out, oh my God, I bought that game and it was just a breath of fresh air. Because I'm a character loyalist, so it wasn't the best graphics, but because my character was in it, <laughs> I loved it. Now with this, my third main character would be introduced, and that is Tanya. So we're going to play this at native settings here. We'll take it to the warrior ladder. And major differences between the PlayStation and Nintendo 64 version of the game is that you actually get full motion video endings for all the characters. I would say she had my favorite kiss of death throughout all the iterations of the Mortal Kombat game. 
That seemed to be like a common move that they gave to the women all the way from MK1 into MK5. And when Tanya kisses you, your body folds up into a box and explodes. I always felt that was a bit more creative than Katana's, even though Sonya was the originator of that move. Yes, you know, that air fireball was so good with Tanya to this day. Now, something I wish that they did with Tanya that Sindel has in MK3 is that after the jump kick, you could do air fireball. <laughs> oh my god, and she could throw the boomerang. So yeah, Sindel has a combo in, in MK3 where she can launch you, do a jump kick, and then cancel the jump kick into the air, the air fireball that comes out of her mouth. I would have thought that they would have given Tanya something similar like that because you can follow up after the launch combo into a jump kick, but you can't not cancel into her air fireball after that, which I thought was kind of stupid. So there should it's like you, there should be like an ender to that. Yeah, she definitely was original. Um, I'd say my favorite iteration of Tanya to this day would definitely be the Mortal Kombat 6 Deception version of her. Yeah, and I noticed one Easter egg about Tanya is that in Mortal Kombat 6 Deception, when you go through conquest mode, you're gonna eventually meet all the characters in the game because they serve a purpose within the story, like a major part of the overall story. And when you reach those characters, they actually um, are able to express a milestone on how they play a part in that particular realm. So you know, there's Outworld, Order Realm, um, Chaos Realm, Adenia, and Tanya is in Adenia because she is, Hold on one sec. Let me beat Raiden. Ooh. Okay, so Tanya's in Adenia and she's watching over Sindel as she's on palace arrest because at some point Tanya is, you know, coaxed into working for the Dragon King to help him locate the six pieces of the Kami Dogu. But at the same time, she's being forced to work for the Dragon King because of Barack and Melina threatened her with death. Now this is the original storyline we're talking about here. So yeah, I noticed that when I played this on N64, the endings were were just as the game blocky and full of polygons. And I see how that in the PlayStation version and in Dreamcast, they really clean that up by giving us smooth, um, full motion videos for the endings of the characters. And I think it was uh, um, some of the most memorable endings because for the first time, most people didn't realize that the Mortal Kombat characters could even talk. So these were the first endings where they actually talked, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that's something definitely that wouldn't happen today where the characters say Honda Toyota. I was hoping that at some point in the future, Mortal Kombat games will go back to making full motion video endings. Now that we have like more than enough space, 
more than enough technology. Like, it'd be awesome if the characters really had, like, full motion video endings instead of text endings. I think I got a flawless. Hell yeah. So I think there's very few people that I know even still play four like that. Yeah, we don't like Reiko. Yeah, this game also at some point was a great segue into Mortal Kombat mythologies. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking there should be like an RPG adventure platform collection of Mortal Kombat. And I'm just thinking about that right now. Mortal Kombat Special Forces, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero Mythologies. All of those games actually should be on like a collection, like the RPG or platform collection of Mortal Kombat. And they all play like a significant part in the backstory too, actually. Oh yeah, Goro's next. Ooh, that's right, I have to stay on him. He takes like 50% damage moves. Goro. I think that's the first loss I got. <laughs> Goro. Okay. All right, Goro. All right, Shinnok, here we go. Okay, Shinnok got me. Come on, we got this. We got this. 
It's funny, I never throw the objects in a game. Like, I never ever pick up, like, the skulls, the rocks, the boulders, or anything. There we go. Yeah, and all of these full motion video endings are so memorable. I think I must have memorized like over half of them. Special plan for them. Tanya, no, what's, what's going, going on? on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Katana saw in you. Did you see Luke Kang? Look at that trap. You're welcome, Shaolin Warrior. Your Thunder God is beaten. Earth's warriors destroyed. One of the last witness of the force of light. Do you wish to beg mercy from the new master, the Lord Shark? Never saw her. Fool. <laughs> yeah, so classic. Hmm. Oh, right. I got to write my name. Okay. That was pretty quick. And I think this was the last game where they allowed photographs of themselves to be put into the video game because after Mortal Kombat 4, there were no more pictures of the design team that they plastered like this. So this is actually the last game they did this type of model. From Mortal Kombat 5 Deception on out, they would just be rolling credits and that's it. Hell yes, yeah, so I went through arcade mode without losing. All right. We're going to up the ante a bit. We're going to make it a little bit more difficult now. So, of course, this was the first generation of 3D fighting games for the Mortal Kombat series. It would be some time before they would release Mortal Kombat 5 Deadly Alliance. And when they did, Midway actually spent all of their budget and everything that they had. They were banking on this game. And it did so well that it allowed them to go and create 6 Deception and then 7 Armageddon. So that was great because they were really, really about to go under and file for bankruptcy. But Mortal Kombat 5 actually saved them. And that's a bit of trivia knowledge for those who are tuning in right now. So I'm going to go in for a couple of seconds for a commercial break while I switch over to Mortal Kombat 5 Deadly Alliance. Oh my God. When I This was like one of the first games I got. No, no, no. This was the first game that I got for PS2. Alongside Street Fighter EX3, X-Men Next Dimensions, and then I think Williams Arcade Classics for PS2 or something like that. But I fondly remember this was one of the first games that I got alongside Street Fighter EX3, the PS2 DVD remote, and two PS2 controllers. I remember it like yesterday, and it was back in 2003. It was a wonderful time, and I had just turned 18 years old. Okay, going in for that commercial break, we'll be right back while we switch this disc.
Thank you. I'm always trying to make sure I, I put something useful knowledge, especially about um, the martial arts gaming world that we love so much. Um, these little Easter eggs matter to the history and the culture of our community. And sometimes, or quite oftentimes, this stuff gets uh, overlooked. And so I try to make sure that I share this lore and this knowledge, especially if you lived through those transition moments in life. He was born in a time where all these systems, um, the different generational console worlds, wars existed. Then um, all of this is uh, very significant. Okay, the game is loading. There we go. I mean, so now moving over to MK5, I remember I had saved enough money to buy the Deadly Alliance strategy guidebook. I actually should have took it up from off the off my shelf. I have the Deadly Alliance. Um, but, oh, hold on here. Okay, there we go. I have the Deadly Alliance strategy guide. And we're talking about at a time where when Brady Games were making these exclusive strategy guides and that's how you got an idea of how to play the game at a high level. Hours and hours of screenshots, combos from front to back. These people had like exclusive backstage access to the developers and the graphic designers of these fighting games so they could make these strategy guidebooks and release them at the time that the game was announced. Yes, I'm gonna let this play through. This is the moment where Liu Kang dies. Sorry, I'm not the greatest fan of Liu Kang, but... <laughs> but man, oh, I remember sitting down, I'm like, ooh, we get an opening movie to Mortal Kombat 5. Ooh, yes! <laughs> I still play this game hardcore to this day, hardcore. And every time I even think about it, I, I understand what Ed Boon was trying to do with this game, but I don't think they had the technology at the time to give the shine to a 3D Mortal Kombat the way that it needs to be envisioned. I can tell that they was really trying to do something like Virtual Fighter meets Dead or Alive um, meets Tekken. So they wanted to have the fluidity of Dead or Alive but with the intricacies of, of um, Virtual Fighter but with the popularity of like Tekken. And in today's technology now, if they was to reinvent this game 3D with, with what we have, the tools we have now, I have no doubt that with the right people from, from different walks of life that, have, that are used to making 3D fighting games could remake Immortal Kombat the way it should have looked in now, if I'm articulating this correctly. Yeah, they definitely need to create a 3D collection of Mortal Kombat. Um, for those of you who are tuning in right now, has there ever been a tournament for this game? I don't ever remember there being a tournament for any of the 3D Mortal Kombat games. If there have, could you let me know in the comments below? I haven't even seen these in mystery, as a mystery tournament game at all. Alright, here we go. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Alright, 2002. Okay, so I want people to see this. I put this game on the hardest setting. Yes, this shit is on max. And we're going to do a mini game every three. Done. Yeah, save to the memory card. 
Woo! Okay. 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 Let's do this. <laughs> Actually, let me put in my profile. <laughs> there I go. So, I didn't unlock Natara and I didn't unlock Dramen yet. Because my original data got lost. And the original data to this game is protected. So, if you ever tried to move the Mortal Kombat 5 Deadly Alliance or 6 Deception data from one ps card from one ps2 card to another it won't happen i don't know it's something the way they program the game where your data is your data you can't share it I know, I always wanted to do like all 3D Mortal Kombat games. I don't know if people would do 4, because 4 is very choppy. But like 5, 6, and 7. Especially 5 and 6. Oh my god. Like I spend hours mastering this game. Good shit, Movado. That was good. <laughs> I love that she has a guard break. There we go. So yeah, running Mortal Kombat Deception or even Deadly Alliance at like Combo Break or a smaller tournament, they would have to want to have it. And then they're going to want to know if there's the numbers to want to play it. 
and if there's people that even still remember how to play it and if there's people that even played it at all like I'm probably like part of the cult of Mortal Kombat lovers that like played this game into the ground and I primarily play Mortal Kombat parts 2 all the way up to where we are now with 11 fluently no less So yeah, Reptile is one of the harder people to play in the game, but I love it. Oh my god. Yeah, we try one more time. So yeah, Reptile is one of the hardest. Oh yeah, I get a mini game. See, it'd be nice if they bought that back. <laughs> the new Mortal Kombat game, the mini games were cute. All right, reptile.
Yeah, I shouldn't have been playing with Reptile last time, so I was like, let me get serious. Let me get serious. <laughs> Okay, that was odd. I sidestepped that. So, being able to throw your weapon and stab someone in this game was a great innovation because it sticks in their entire body the entire match. <laughs> Sometimes I wish there was a way the characters played all at 100% because the game gradually goes up in difficulty starting at 80% all the way till you get to 100%. But if all the characters played at 100%, I think that would be like a true champion like um, style level.
Yeah. <laughs> Out of all of the battle sequences in all the Mortal Kombat games, when you get ready to go to the next opponent, I think Mortal Kombat 5 is my favorite. As the planet turns to the next person, I like that a lot. It's funny, um, if I'm playing against a second person, like two players, and we do test your sight, and somebody gets it wrong, but the other person gets it right, the opponent will hit the other person in the face that got it wrong. We never liked Kano. We never liked him. He has to die. It's funny because the graphics sometimes look so bad. It doesn't even look like body parts. It looks like bacon bits or some shit. Like pieces of chicken and pork. Ah, yes, the first introduction of Blind Kinchi.
Oh yeah, and I can't forget, Ed Boon once talked about back when the release of this game that the best one of the innovations of the characterizations personalities was adding um, emotions, expressions, and bruised faces and torn clothing. So you can see like if the battle was tough, but you won, you can still see the bruising. I missed it. <laughs> oh, wow. And the toasty man says that. <laughs> I missed it. Okay. So yeah, Moloch and Draman are like the sub-bosses of the game. And the funny thing is to fight Moloch, you have to whiff punish him of everything he does. Hey, hey! Thanks for joining in. Cookie Tuesday's Retro Gaming Life. We're in on the second 3D Mortal Kombat game, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Yeah, that's because Moloch hasn't been seen after 5. Neither has Draman, neither has Mocap. You know, a bunch of people haven't been seen. Bo Raicho. This is like the best song in the game.
Thank you. Yeah, the, the, the possibilities are pretty endless in this game. Yeah, somehow my moves wasn't coming out. I'm like, what's going on? Okay, Quan Chi, we're going to stop you. Oh, yeah, I'm, fi I'm fighting him at like 100%. Like, he's at 98% difficulty level which actually isn't hard for the time that I've been playing this game for so long but then again I'm playing on a PS3 and not a PS2 so inputs are a little laggy Like, how is, m okay, why is this changing my style without me changing the button? I'm on controller. Okay. Like, this is really changing my thing. Okay. I'm going to have to get a little cheap right now. Got to get a little cheap. Let the time run. Or let the fans that are in his head continue to drain the blood out of his skull. Yep, the reversals, the guard breaks in this game are really good. Caught him with the full 11 hitter. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, my style, my style changes kept changing without me changing them. So when I got ready to do certain moves, like they weren't coming out. And I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't change that style. Otherwise, I would have beat Quan Chi earlier on. But I don't know how that happened. But it's PS3, so... And on a perfect day, I'll play this game and I'll beat it without losing at all. Oh yeah, I know how to change like that with all three styles. 
and know all the combo sequences between all three styles. Okay, let's see if I got this. You chose unwisely. <laughs> the animations are great. <laughs> oh. So the the only um drawbacks of this game are the limitations of um juggling people up to three times because you can only juggle people three times before the opponent falls to keep from having infinites. One, two, and three. So no matter what and what style you have a launcher in all three styles, you can only um, I would have always thought they brought more more innovation like this into Mortal Kombat. The three style changes like that. I think this is the most realistic version of all of the characters that they've implemented in the 3D games because this is really what martial arts Chinese and Japanese and various forms of martial arts would look like in actual combat. <laughs> so I like that's what I like a lot about this. The sidestepping is good. Depending on the character that you pick, some have guard break, some have parries, some have power ups. Like Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, they both have power ups and they both have parries. Katana doesn't have a parry. She has a guard break and she has a backhand spring. And it's funny because you have to know which style to change into to access that move. So under Eagle Claw is the guard break. Under Bagua is the back handspring. And then under Steel Fan, she has thrusts with that move. So, yes, it is very authentic. And once again, I can't stress enough. The issue with the game was, at the time that it was created in 2002, the technology just wasn't there to make it as pretty and as flu even more fluid as it would have been if it was like a Dead or Alive or a Virtual Fighter 5 game. Like, imagine, like, right now, this game being remade over the same way, but with more things, like... I remember Ed Boon also said in an interview with, the ma with one of the game magazines that they didn't have enough time to give everyone two fatalities, they, so they gave them one. That's why in Deception there's a Harakiri, two fatalities, and stage fatalities as well. They just didn't have enough time to implement that in the first game, and so that's why you see what you see here. So in a way, Deception is the polished version of 5, um, but with the continuation of the original timeline of MK before the reset in Mortal Kombat, at the end of Mortal Kombat 9 leading into 10. Yeah, I think I must have played five for hours and hours and hours and hours on end because in the beginning, a lot of the characters aren't unlocked. You have to go through um, the conquest mode with all the characters and they teach you how to play with every character and every time you beat conquest mode, you get the coins, gold coins, sapphire coins, ruby coins, etc. And Katana costs... I think she must have cost like 
200,000 sapphire coins or something like that, like 2,000 or 5,000 sapphire coins or something. So I had to play the game to get all those coins to unlock her. And the harder, the harder the setting, the more the coins. So if you play this game on a weak setting, you're not going to get a lot of coins. But if you play this game on the hardest setting, you get some serious money and then you could go to the crypt. This is when the crypt was first created. The crypt came from MK5. So then you could go to the crypt and unlock all the characters, the stages, the art, the extra costumes, and all that other shit. Yes, Deception had three styles too. It was an expansion. Yeah, so Deception is technically Mortal Kombat 6. And it tells you the conclusion of what happened to the Deadly Alliance. To which I'm about to switch in that game in a very couple in a couple of seconds. So, as the crypt continued to return in each Mortal Kombat game, they changed it. They innovated it. So in Mortal Kombat 5 Deadly Alliance and 6 Deception, the crypt pretty much was the same. And then they switched it up a little bit in 7 Armageddon. The crypt looked a little bit different. Then in Mortal Kombat 9, the crypt took on a totally different universe. You can actually travel and walk around and, you know, raise um, souls from the dead. And that's when they started to change the crypt to be open world was in Mortal Kombat 9. And the crypt connected to another place called the Acropolis, which was, I guess, the connecting area where you can see um, all the characters you beat the game with in their collective endings. Yes, the gamble was cool. I agree. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, yes, Platinum Coins and Onyx Coins were very difficult to get. In, in fact, in all of them, from 5 on up. But now in Mortal Kombat 11, they changed that entire concept. So, there aren't different types of coins. Now, they changed it to, like, different types of currency, but not with coins. They did it with different, like, now you need souls... Um, icons, ver various um, um, various iconography that you can pick up and you can now create sorcery to open up different parts of Shang Tsung's island and such in Mortal Kombat 11. It was very innovative. Something I never would have thought of. And then you can die all different kind of ways with the adventure character. Like, I one time was standing still and the comet, the comet hit me and I died. I don't even know, like, I didn't even think that was possible. They thought of everything just about with Mortal Kombat 11. Okay, moving forward, we're going to go to our third game of the night. We're going to hit, hit y'all up with Deception right here. We're going to hit you with Deception. Going in for a couple of seconds, commercial break. Thank you once again for tuning in to Cookie Tuesday's Retro Gaming Life. If you haven't subscribed to this channel to Strike First Gaming, please do so. If you're watching the re-upload of this on my YouTube channel, please find a moment to hit the like and the subscribe if you like this content, and leave your comments below, for I will be very interactive. I am quick to answer comments. I try to make sure that um, I'm, um, I respond to the public as swift as possible, especially when I receive an alert on my phone. Okay, we're going into Deception, Mortal Kombat 6. Like this, this is when they made the open world conquest mode and it wasn't so linear like MK5 was. This is when they made the open world conquest mode and it wasn't so linear. And this is when we're introduced to the new character that we still haven't seen yet, Shujinko, who talks about how he was the one that brought the power to Onaga who was deceived by the spirit who called himself Damashi. Um, so basically, Shujinko is the Jago of Mortal Kombat. Jago was following the tiger spirit only to find out that the tiger spirit ended up being um, a false, false spirituality that led into the creation of Gargos and the Dark Dimension and all that other bullshit in the K Killer Instinct storyline. In Mortal Kombat, we got Shujinko, who was trying to be a, a martial artist, who was trying to better himself, who got fooled by a spirit named Damashi, who was actually Onaga trapped in another world trying to get the six pieces of the Kami Dogu so he can claim his dominance again. And therefore fulfilling an ancient prophecy. 
Raiden's Earthrealm champions have failed to stop the Deadly Alliance from fully resurrecting the mummified army of the Dragon King. In the end, when Raiden himself stood between Earthrealm and total destruction, defying the Elder God's wishes, he alone challenged Quan Chi and Shang Tsung in mortal combat, Earthrealm's last hope for freedom. See, I wish Mortal Kombat gave us more opening movies like this. I think to this day, this is probably the best opening. The best opening! <laughs> this is great. Ed Boon, can you remake this over in HD? Like, make this shit 4K? <laughs> this was great! <laughs> I haven't seen, like, an, an opening movie in Mortal Kombat that I like this much since Shaolin Monks. Shaolin Monks opening movie was great. Oh yeah, I be getting into my games when I really love them. <laughs> Now that my mind is thinking, I would love to have a Dragon King statue. I want a statue of Onaga the Dragon King. Of this figure walking into the room right here. Yes, give me a figurine of him. See, on this game, Ed Boon and the rest of the MK team had a lot more time, so they was able to polish this game to the best ability that PlayStation 2 hardware could even implement. Now, this is the game where we understand how Raiden became truly Dark Raiden in the original storyline. In this moment, right, you see right here, Raiden is releasing his godlike essence to destroy the most ultimate evil that's here, and that's how he becomes Dark Raiden. And now Onaga the Dragon King has the Windows disc. Right, going into arcade mode, yes. Right. 
So there is an upgrade to this game. There is an upgrade to this game known as Mortal Kombat Deception Unchained for PSP, which includes Goro, who was released in the GameCube version of this game, Katana, and several other characters. As you know, Katana was, um, she was killed in Mortal Kombat 5, but she was resurrected by the Dragon King and forced to be his mistress and bodyguard, to which this is a very de defining moment for Sindel, who teams up with Jade to rescue her daughter from the clutches of the Dragon King. All right, let's go into it. Yeah, chess combat, puzzle combat, um, and also there is the, the racing mode that's in this game for race car combat. So these are all the side games that they have that was um, innovative at the time. All right. Oh, I fight myself. Round one, fight! Ooh, I didn't know that it was on one round. Hold on. I gotta change that. I gotta change that. We don't want that. Hold up. And I think I'm gonna change the difficulty, too. We'll, we'll up the challenge of this. Okay. We don't want it on one round. Oh, also... New techniques in this game. This is the game that in, um, invented the first combo breaker technique for Mortal Kombat in general. It was first introduced in Deception. This is the first game. Okay, let's get to our game options. Okay, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why, yeah. But let's get it to the max right there. Death traps on, burn level max two. Okay, yeah, we're gonna put this on max. We're gonna challenge ourselves here. We don't want the game to be too easy. Okay. This game also included um, multiple breaking stages, death traps, collapsible environments. Oh, 
she kills herself. Round 
Yeah, they never gave her that ankle grab move again in this game, and it's it's great because um, if I miss the sonic scream and the opponent blocks, I could put the input in for the leg grab kick, and it'll go right into that. So that's one of my favorite moves right there. That's called spider legs. Yeah, spider legs is so good. Wow, I forgot. Yeah, and that is a death trap too in this game. So he hit me one time. I just happened to be at the edge, and that was my ring out. <laughs> And it happened so quick. I didn't think I was like truly at the edge because I was standing at an angle because the um, the ring outs in Mortal Kombat 6, you have to really be like, like you have to be at the edge. At, but I guess I was. Okay, Liu Kang. And that's how quick a match can end. He did one combo. I rolled to the side once he finished. I started my combo. I did two launchers and ended in a thrust and knocked him off the stage. And that's an instant death trap. Cool, cool. No problem. Thank you for joining in.
I think this is like one of my favorite stages in the game, the Golden Desert. The Golden Desert has three different death traps. Like literally three different death traps in this one stage.
see, I was about to knock him into the rotating saw blades, but he decided to kill himself. So okay, so much for the de so much for the stage fatality. See, that's the Sindel that I know right there. Not this uh, new storyline version of her. So the idea is to hit the Kamidoku pieces and that's what weakens the Dragon King. So I walk over there to him to hit the, the pieces. Also, you got to be careful because then you get hit into the death trap. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here we go. <laughs> Sarcophagus opened. His body remained, but the armor was missing. Strangely, the hieroglyphics in his tomb were similar to an ancient Indian language. She, she discovered an incantation inscribed by Onaga's holy men that was intended to transport his soul back into its original body. As she was memorizing the spell, Onaga emerged from the shadows. Onaga could have defeated both Jade and Sindel, but instead he took sadistic pleasure in unleashing Katana against them. He was a fool. Jade held off Katana while Sindel thrust her Quan down into the heart of the corpse. As she screamed the ancient incantation, Onaga's soul leapt from Reptile's body into its intended vessel. The corpse came to life and cried in agony as the Quan Dao preventing its heart from reforming. Sindel held the blade firmly in place as Onaga returned to the cold sleep of death. With the Dragon King defeated, the realms were safe and Sindel's daughter Katana was free from his spell. May Denya know peace once more. Okay, that was Mortal Kombat 6 Deception. We're about to head into the final game of the night. We're going to get into Mortal Kombat 7 Armageddon. This one implemented air combos. And they took away the three styles because they had so many characters in the game, they couldn't fit all of that content in it. So what they did was they allowed for two styles, air combos... Um, and still stage fatalities and dial a fatality. This was the game where you can invent your own fatality and it could go up to like 10 steps before you can finish the opponent off. Yeah, the credits are pretty long, so we're going to cut the credits short this time around um, as we go into a, a commercial break for a couple of seconds while I change the disc. game is loading We're going to let that, let that opening movie play through. The Armageddon opening. There have been many powerful oh. warriors throughout the millennia. 
but ages of mortal combat have begun to tear the fabric of the realms. The critical point has finally been reached. Up oh, there's Kentaro. It was foreseen that combatants would one day grow too powerful and too numerous. If left unchecked, their intensifying combat would weaken and shatter the realms and bring about the apocalypse. will be revived So some interesting lore about Seven here. Most of us Mortal Kombat fans thought that after Seven, Eight was going to let us know what happened after the Pyramid of Argus, which is what you see right here. Only to find out that Mortal Kombat 8 actually ended up being Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, and that when Mortal Kombat 9 came into play, it was Raiden receiving visions of his past self to his future self for him to go back in time to change some events to eliminate Armageddon from happening. Which is what led to the timeline reset when he changed some events, leading into a whole separate universe of um, what happened in the past now being erased and everything taking place in 10 and 11. So I thought that was pretty interesting because a lot of us who's been following Mortal Kombat since 1992, like, in, in, like intensively, like I have, um, only to watch all that stuff get thrown in a trash all these many, many, many years later was kind of disappointing. All right, we're going to get right into it. Okay. 
So I play with both Katana and Sindel in this game. I'm going to take Katana this time again. I'll leave it at normal difficulty. Oh yeah, for sure. In fact, I used to know how to do the air combo infinite in this game where you had to do the style change and block at the same time in the air. Yeah, there was definitely um, a dialer combo, and then you can bounce yourself back up, continue the air combo, do style change and block at the same time. Your character would drop down because it's a glitch, and then you can re wash, rinse, repeat, and get an infinite air combo. Wow. Really? Wow, that's funny. Wow, I fall off the edge. How cute. Yeah, chameleon.
And I think you could go up to like 10 times to do the fatality. included Sindel, Jade, Sonya, and Li Mei. Together, they laid waste to the forces of darkness and trapped them in the Netherrealm forever. I have to say this game was very ambitious on Ed Boon's part. You know, I quote his words. He wanted to end Mortal Kombat on the on the last generation system that it was for, which was PlayStation 2, before he worked on a new Mortal Kombat game to represent the next generation console, which was PlayStation 3. So I understand why he did what he did when he made 7 have all these characters and try to jam-pack everything on one CD. And for what it was worth, it was, you know, it was cool. I really enjoyed it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite out of the 3D series. Um, 
Deception and Deadly Alliance are my favorite out of the 3D collection. And hopefully, perhaps, maybe one day when Mortal Kombat has a, a memorial anniversary, Ed Boon will think about re-releasing these games for modern systems, you know, for people to have, instead of just them being confined to the consoles that they were released back in the day. Um, this has been Cookie Tuesday's Retro Gaming Life. Thank you for joining us for this uh, for this Tuesday's broadcast of Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat 5 Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat 6 Deception, and Mortal Kombat 7 Armageddon. I look forward to seeing you guys next Tuesday who can tune in to the next Retro Tuesday where we will introduce the next set of four retro martial arts fighting games. This announcement will take place on Facebook as usual and also be retweeted on Twitter. Um, if you have any requests or any thoughts, feel free to find me on Facebook or Twitter um, or even uh, leave some comments here into the, um, into the stream chat below. Thank you. Um, thank you for always uh, supporting my, my stream every Tuesdays. You know, next Tuesday, I have a set of four games that I believe most people have not seen because these are actually unreleased games that were prototypes but they were conversions so this is actually going to be the first time I do something like this but they are retro fighting games and they're four um, three of the, three out of the four titles I I'm gonna know for sure most people have not known or have not seen and they have not been released outside Japan and they haven't actually been released at all so um I can't I hope I'm not uh, stepping on any copyright infringements for next Tuesday but I'm very excited to announce these games on Saturday so stay tuned um, for the next four retro fighting games for sure so no Marshall Masters actually was released and yes I'm gonna be covering that game in fact I in fact I can re I'll release this early on at hand when I do Marshall Masters, I'm going to do it side by side with another um, fighting game called Daraku Tenchi, which is known as The Fallen Angels, which was company Psycho. I think it's called Psycho is the name of the company. But yeah, I'm going to do Daraku Tenchi alongside Marshall Masters. So yes, and then I'll probably put in Rumblefish 2 at the same time. I'm still deciding on the selection order when I do Marshall Masters, but that'll probably be the following Tuesday, but not this Tuesday coming up, but the following Tuesday. Yes, I do like Marshall Masters a lot. I play with Crane and Snake. Yes, I like that game a lot. Um, I remember when it first came out in the arcades many, many years ago when I was in high school. That was a really good game, like underappreciated, just like Rumblefish was underappreciated in the beginning. And then also Rage of the Dragons, another fighting game. I haven't covered that yet. We'll cover that soon. Um, that's another fighting game that was a, a cult following. Yes, ti you know, Tiger, Tiger was excellent. He was like the only American person in the game. His combo sets were really good. And you can see, like, his... his battle stage I think had like the British flag in the background or something like that I have to go back and play the game again to get a sense of his background stage but I believe his home country was uh, advertised in his battle stage yes yeah, so definitely we'll cover martial masters um, and at some point, I'm going to cover some more SNK games. I've been focusing on games that most people don't talk about or don't see in a long time. It's easy to cover the King of Fighters games or the Fate of Fury games or the Art of Fighting games. But it's harder to cover other fighting games that most people either have forgotten about or they haven't seen. And so I'm trying to make sure that I shed light on those games before I get to a lot of the common games that most people know about. Yes, a British flag. So yeah, I um, really good game, really really good game. But yes, I will cover it. That's coming soon, definitely. Yep, gonna co gonna cover Bakumatsu Roman. 
So I think I think what I will do with the last blade is I will probably couple it with um, samurai spirits of some sort. I know I covered samurai spirits warriors rage already, but I wanted I may cover it one more time because uh, the end of the samurai showdown storyline. The end of that era leads into the Bakumatsu era, which is where the last blade takes place. Hence its original Japanese name, Bakumatsu Roman. So that is the spiritual successor and storyline, new generation of samurai warriors um, in an era where they were um, starting to outlaw samurai. And that's where the last blade storyline takes place. So yes, and I'll do parts one and parts two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love The Last Blade. I play with Yuki in that game. So. Alrighty. So that has been Cookie Tuesday's Retro Gaming Life. Thank you for joining us. I will see you next Tuesday with the next set of four games. And if once again, if you haven't had a chance, please do subscribe to Strike First Gaming Twitch channel. And um, thank you for tuning in and have a great evening.